This is Bet That. I'm Alex Glaze. Before we start, I have to mention that while we'll talk about football through the lens of sports gambling, we are not offering you any advice. This is just for fun. Joining me this week, friend of the show, Mark Zeno, the Colonel Mark Zeno. I uh, appreciate you taking some time, Zeno. No, I absolutely love being here. Love talking gambling uh, and sports betting with you, brother. We've been doing it for a long time, man. But uh, look, I'm wearing my master's hat today. This is a, a big weekend, big sports weekend for me. It's been a lot of big sports weekends over the past couple of months. But uh, this weekend, I was really looking forward to it. I was really trying to figure out how I'm going to spend my Saturday and Sunday, really trying to look at the schedules because, you know, the Masters, you can't miss the Masters. You know, you just you got to watch it. So I was trying to see what games are when, you know, how many screens I'm going to have up. But a lot of games got canceled this weekend. So it's making my, my – uh, your betting slate a little thinner. Well, my options are – I have less options, so it's making right. my choices easier. Right. Um, I think four SEC games canceled. I mean, what the f- – Yeah. Not looking good. No, but again, I, I think this should have been expected in college. It's college kids. It's a college campus. It's a germ factory. It always oh, has well, been. You know, we're not going to sit here and blame the kids. No, I'm not, I'm not what I, what, what I'm, what I'm saying is simply that it was more likely to have an outbreak in college than it was in the pros. I just think the environment lends to its more, and I think college kids are a little bit more capricious and a little uh, less judicious in the way closer they choose. Quarters. They're in closer time. quarters, too. Yeah, yeah, that, too, as well. All right. Well, we can talk a lot more about that. Sure. We're not going to. We're going to, talk, we're going to talk some football. But before we do, since I'm wearing the Masters hat, we got to who, – who's your pick? I know it's already started, but, you know, it's not going to be Bryson, who is the favorite going in here. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's Brooksy. Brooksy Brooks? is my okay. boy. I, I've said it repeatedly. I'm like, a Brooks guy. When I step on the golf course, I am Brooks Kepka. Minus the fact that I hit the ball where it's supposed to go. Other than that, like, you know, it's tight T-shirt, packing a lipper, you know, just grip and rip it. That's me, baby. Now, Brooks is a man. I mean, he, just, he doesn't care. He no. just doesn't care. He's just out there. Just He's just out there. I, I can appreciate that. So, I, I, I like Brooks, too. Um, part of me wants – I want Tiger. I do. You are Tiger you guys such sentimentalist for Tiger. Give it up. Tiger, give it up. He's the reigning champ. Give it up. He's the reigning champ. He hasn't played a decent round of golf since. He's been re- he's been resting his body for yeah, the Masters. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get into so, some football. Let's start with a segment I call Fade or Follow. I'm going to give you some picks, and you tell me if you are going to fade or follow those picks. Let's start with uh, some college football. Indiana laying seven points against Michigan State. Um, for me, I'm going with Indiana in this game. And it's been, it's been really weird watching Indiana football this year because they don't look like the Indiana football team that I feel like we're used to seeing ever. <laughs> like I've never seen an Indiana football team look the way that this Indiana football team looks. They look, they look, they look confident. They look like a good team. I think they're in the top 10. I think they're ranked 10th right now. Uh, this is a good football team. They have a good quarterback, solid defense. Um, you know, regardless of what you think about that, that Penn State game, and who knows what Penn State is because Penn State just got beat by Maryland. Wait, but who knows what Maryland is because Ma- Maryland might be good now. Good. I mean, Mike Loxley might have just, you know, to his brother. Got, they got to uh, talk about Loa, baby. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to his brother looks like the real deal out there. Uh, so, so who knows what's going on at, at Maryland. But I, I just think this Indiana team, uh, they look good. They're 3-0 against the spread this year. And, and Michigan State's got some things to figure out. Yes. And I just think that, you know, I saw this game earlier in the week at seven and a half. I didn't love seven and a half. I, I really would have had to think about it because I really like having that hook on my side, not giving it By up. By the half point, though. I don't like doing that. I'd like to, you know, I'm, oh. I like to, I like to, I like to, you know, use my brain. <laughs> I like to outsmart. I want to outsmart uh, Vegas, which, you know, that hasn't worked out too well for me. Money won but is better than money earned. But it's seven points. I like, I like the round number so i'm i'm laying the seven are you going to fade or follow that pick i'm going to fade it and i'll tell you why there's a couple of different things at play here um one michigan state just went to iowa and got blown out now good teams go to iowa and typically struggle we see it every year there's a big 10 team that has to travel to iowa usually it's late in november you know with their season on the line that ends up laying a stinker because iowa sometimes or iowa is a tough place to play that's number one two I'm always weary about teams um, with good coaches that get blown out and how they respond. Now, Mel Tucker, I still think, is a really good coach. And what's working against him is that the program is sort of devoid of talent. They don't really have any stars or playmakers, and they struggle at quarterback. But 
anytime you get blown out, coaches go extra hard on guys, and the next week they come back and focus real hard. You have Indiana going on the road to Michigan State to play the game here. I don't think that Michigan State wins the game, but it wouldn't surprise me to see them keep this thing close and Indiana win it late by a field goal or, or a late touchdown that goes ahead. I would fade this and take the home dog. All right, next game up, uh, we're going to the NFL Chargers Dolphins. And for this game, my pick is the over uh, 48 and a half. Again, I, this has just been a weird year of football because you have to like almost retrain your brain. Like the Dolphins don't stink anymore. <laughs> they just don't. Ever, I mean, they didn't stink when, when Ryan Fitzpatrick was playing. And it's the head coach, something Atlanta needs to learn to figure out. Well, they'll, 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 they're, we're going to see if they figure that out. Uh, <laughs> You know, this offseason, that's a different discussion, though. But listen, uh, Brian Flores doing a great job there. Yes. And listen, Tua has really come in. And, you know, I don't know if I agree with the way they did Ryan Fitzpatrick. I get it. But, I, you know, if you're in that spot, it's, it's a tough spot to be in because he was playing well. And you just kind of pull him for the guy that, you know, I mean, you don't, you drafted the guy for a reason. It's not just to, you know, have him sit there. And he's looked every bit the part. So he, he's been doing a good job. Tua can put up points. Uh, Justin Herbert and the Chargers, um, their offense has been going. And the Chargers like to give up points, <laughs> a lot of points. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if Joey Bosa can, can come back this week from that concussion. But if he can't go, I definitely like Tua and, and – uh, Herbert to be able to, to you know, lead to some scoring drives here. So I'm going with the over 48 and a half here. All right, a couple of things here. You're over that 47 number, which is critical, which is, you know, the, the sort of watermark that you, you worry about when you're talking about over-unders. And, and you know, I'm going to kind of waffle here. I, I, I think you're on the right side, but I, I would fade it on, based off a couple of premises. And full disclosure, I've been wrong – betting against the Dolphins the last two weeks. Now, week one – Well, listen, they're, they're laying two and a half points this week. I could not bring myself to, to no, give up no, points with and, the Dolphins. I couldn't do it. <laughs> you know, it's weird. You know, again, uh, you got a West Coast team coming east for a 1 o'clock game, and it bodes well for the Dolphins. At some point, two is going to have a rookie game because all rookies have a rookie game. You and I talked about this with Joe Burrow. Remember when Joe Burrow played the Ravens? You know, it was one of those things where he had a rookie game. Now, granted, the Ravens' defense is probably, you know, better than the Chargers' at this point in time. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit, just a, a little, little bit. bit. But, you know, there's going to be a, a, a game where he just doesn't have it uh, early on. Now, I don't know if it's this game. That's why I said I think you're on the right side. But, you know, you're talking about a score that is now 26-24, 27-24 range. You're pushing that, you know, the chances of this thing landing on 49 are very, very slim. All right, next, I'm going to let you do most of the talking with this game because I, I, I feel like I know what you're going to say. So I'm just going to roll with it. I'll stay in, in the NFL. Giants getting three and a half points against the Eagles. I'm rolling with the Giants. Give me the points. Um, you know, your Giants might be struggling this year, but they're actually six and three against the spread. So they, yeah. they do winning for the people that – that back them. So I'm going to back them. The reason to like the Giants here is because they're a home dog within a division, right? And I hate laying points on the road within the division. Uh, plus you get the extra hook at three and a half. Giants defense is good. It's actually a lot better than people want to give it credit for. So this is going to be a low scoring game. And I'm not, what, what, let me look at the, what's the over under number. Do you know at the top of your head? I don't um, it's 44 and a half. So, you know, you're not talking about a high scoring contest here by any stretch of the imagination. Now that said, Eagles are off a bye, okay? That matters. The Eagles have won literally, I want to say, 16 consecutive games against the Giants. The Giants have not beaten them literally in like four years. Um, and, and, and remember the, the game on Thursday night where Evan Ingram dropped the pass that would have sealed the victory, but Giants go on to lose. It's that sort of thing that has happened over and over again to the Giants. The only way the Giants cover this game is if Daniel Jones doesn't turn the ball over or if only turns it over once. That's his cap. That's his limit. And if that's the bet you want to make, by all means, go for it. I'm not willing to make that bet. Again, I don't like laying points on the road within the division. But the Eagles, who can literally grab control of this division right now and actually become respectable, have to go out and have a showing after the bye week that they can go crush. Respectable? I mean, let's not like, you know, 500. Um, not not saying that 
Hey, you know, Listen, you, I don't know. All I know is look, all I know is Super Bowls and playoffs from you know Baltimore. That's all. I, so it's five hundred respect. I don't know. I understand. I understand. But again, I would tell you that this is a situation where if the Eagles don't put this game together uh, and they get some players back, they get healthy after the bye. If they can't put together a game plan that wins this game handily, dear lord, what an embarrassment! Doug Peterson should be embarrassed. And and listen, you struggle and lose this game, Doug Peterson. You want to talk about the shine being off a guy? He has been more useless since his Super Bowl win than Dan Quinn was since his Super Bowl appearance. Like, that's how bad Doug Peterson has been as far as coaching is concerned. He's often had his team ill-prepared to play. He gets overmatched. His quarterback looks like he doesn't know what he's doing out there. He's running for his life. I mean, it is – it's a bad situation in Philadelphia right now. So there are reasons to like the Giants. But I'll fade it for personal reasons. As a Giants fan, I want them to lose. But I think this is one of those – hey, the Eagles might look like a real football team kind of games. We will see. All right, Zen, let's wrap this up. Time to lock in. Give me your best bet of the weekend. All right, I am going to go out to the AFC West, maybe the toughest division in football, uh, and I am going to take the Denver Broncos getting five points on the road against the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, the Raiders have won two in a row, both of them on the road in tough environments, one in Cleveland in a you know, windstorm, snowstorm, whatever it was in a low scoring affair. And then they get the win last week on the road against the Chargers in a really emotional fashion. Last play of the game, they break up the, what looked like a touchdown. Here's this situation here where a team like the Raiders is better than the team that they are playing in Denver. But this is one of those where they play down to the level of competition. They're coming off a high, they're coming back home. It should be a wash. That number at five is one that always scares me, right? Because five is like one of those spreads you never really see. Five, five and a half is ugly as hell for a favorite. You're not good enough to be favored by a touchdown, but yet you should beat this team handily by more than a field goal. And so you're in that sort of middle zone that I hate being in as a favorite. I think the Raiders may win the game, but it's only by a last second field goal. Denver is good. They're good on defense. And for some reason, Denver – likes to get themselves down by about 10 or 12, 14 points and then come back in the fourth quarter to make every better sweat their brains out for the last two minutes of a game. All right. And I got a little thing around here. I do. Uh, it's called a glaze guarantee. Oh boy. My guarantee for this week. And listen, this was tough because I am a fan. I don't want to make this pick, but I feel like I have to make this pick. This is just, this is the easiest game on the board. This is the easiest. Like this one just screams me this it was just calling my name oh, ravens oh, laying seven points against the patriots and i'm laying the points cam newton has not looked like cam newton um ever since he, uh, listen i i ever since he he's coming back from covid uh he has not looked the same and i think that that's that's fairly obvious to, sure. to everyone yeah. um their offense stinks their defense they can't stop the run and what do the ravens like to do Run. I like the seven. I'm landing. I just don't think that the uh, the Patriots have enough offensive firepower to keep up with the Ravens, and I think that they're going to be able to have a lot of success on the ground. So that's yeah, it. I mean, hard, hard to agree. And again, and, and you're at a key number with seven. If it goes to seven and a half, I'd be a little. That's bit what I'm saying. I like the seven. I like it. You know, you, you, you try to walk out of here I mean, with a push. They barely beat the Jets. I'm like, come on, come on. They gave up almost thirty to the Jets. What does that tell you? Yeah. Yeah, so I, it tells me that the Ravens are going to have a lot of success. Um, and I, By the way, did you enjoy watching Joe Flacco throw a touchdown to Bernard Perrion last week? Can I, be, can I be honest with you? When I, when I was watching that game, I, I was texting at my group chat, and I was like, Perrion can catch? <laughs> like, that was, I, was like, Who I, know, I know Ravens fans are like, this is my nightmare. Flacco to Perriman. Well, look, Flacco, I – listen, I, Flacco's fine. He, he deserves to have an opportunity. Cool. but Joe Flacco – is 20th in NFL history in passing yards. He passed Joe Montana. Joe Flacco has more passing yards than Joe Montana. Oh, come on. You're not one of those people. It's the game they play today. Kyler Murray will soon pass those guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, that's just. So I just have to do my initial little, you know, next time people want to use passing yards as a Hall of Fame stat. Oh, are you taking a shot at uh, anybody specific? I'm telling you, it's not a barometer anymore. It's like 11th on the neither list. Are, neither are wins while we're on the topic. Neither are wins. No, I'm not saying they are. 
I know. I mean, I'm just saying people want to – people like to cling on to wins also, but that's not it either. Uh, all right, Zeno, why don't you tell the people where they can find your, uh, your work? Of course. You can go to me on Twitter, at Mark Zeno. I do my Twitter lives now, uh, which is a great place. And I join you sometimes phone. when my, yeah, when my yeah, yeah, iPad yeah, yeah. or whatever works. When you figure out the technology, you like to join me, which is always awesome. But a uh, special plug for my Hazard Ground podcast. Uh, you can get it anywhere podcasts are found, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or everywhere. Also go to our website, hazardground.com. You can get all of our episodes there. Amazing stories of heroism, combat, and survival. Uh, we have a huge following. Why don't you guys join in and uh, subscribe, rate, review, do all that great stuff. Thanks. Awesome. And Zeno, with Veterans Day just uh, passing. Of course, I got to tell you, thank you for your service. Really thank appreciate you, sir. it. And uh, all the freedoms you allow people like me to enjoy without even thinking Sports about gambling. every day. Yes, yes, <laughs> without having to, to worry about anything. So I really appreciate that. Uh, and of course, you can follow me on social media as well, at Alex underscore Glaze on Twitter. Uh, we try to do this every week. Um, follow the 11 Alive YouTube channel so you don't miss out. We have a lot of fun with this. Follow us on social media because we also, you know, we chirp during these games too so you don't want to miss out on any of that so follow the channel follow us on social media so you can uh, keep up with the fun until next time <laughs>